If I had to choose a single word to encapsulate the essence of SpaceX, flexibility would undoubtedly be the perfect choice. Following Starship Flight 3, SpaceX quickly mobilized its resources to address the encountered issues and prepare for the next launch. With an estimated time frame of six weeks, SpaceX set the goal of achieving readiness for Flight 4. They will have new modifications for Ship 29 and Booster 11 specifically, which I'm confident is necessary for SpaceX to make sure that the next launch goes smoothly. These new designs are based on the issues we've identified from the launch process. First, there's a change to the grid fins of the booster. This stems from the landing process of B-10, which highlighted an important area that needs improvement in SpaceX's Starship program. During the landing process, B-10 exhibited significant instability. As we can see from reviewing this video segment, the grid fins were rolled, shaking vigorously in an uncontrollable manner. So, what could be the cause? SpaceX has not made any announcements regarding this issue, but we have some very interesting speculations. The incident with the grid fins may be related to the control capabilities in its drive system. Actuators serve as the mechanisms responsible for controlling the movement of grid fins, enabling adjustments in pitch, yaw, and roll. The choice of power sources for these actuators is crucial. The company adopted an electronic steeling system, no hydraulic fluid here, to adjust the fins. However, it's been unstable. In the past, Starship Flight 2 was delayed once due to having to replace the actuator on the net fin. Another possible cause that could make the grid fins widely fluctuate is electrical supply interruption. The four grid fins are electrically activated and powered by the ship's electrical system. SpaceX used Tesla batteries to operate this system a few years back. However, this also can't prevent issues from arising with this type of battery. Grid fins are a special type of control surface, kind of like an aircraft's flaps or rudder. On both SpaceX and Super Heavy Booster and Falcon 9's first stage booster, Grid fins are used to provide aerodynamic pitch, yaw, and roll control to the booster while it's falling back to Earth through the atmosphere. Grid fins are odd in that while they're relatively flat, they actually represent a fairly large fin surface area, because they're essentially comprised of tens of smaller fins whose surface area all adds up. On Falcon 9, they're primarily used because during ascent, the grid fin can be folded down, making it present less surface area to the oncoming airflow during ascent. This reduces drag and makes the rocket more efficient. On Super Heavy, there are four grid fins weighing three metric tons each, or 6,600 pounds, which is about 20 times heavier than the Falcon 9 grid fins, based on an estimate that I found of 140 kilograms for Falcon 9. The grid fins don't fold as a folding mechanism would add weight and complexity, aka cost. Their simulations also indicate that the grid fins shouldn't make too much of an impact on Super Heavy's efficiency during ascent. This is likely due to Super Heavy just being much bigger than Falcon 9, that the square cubed law makes aerodynamic drag contribute much less to the forces that the engines have to fight against, with the sheer mass of the rocket and gravity drag being a lot more consequential. Overall, this component will be one of the things that SpaceX definitely needs to pay attention to in the next Starship flight. It may change based on the issues encountered in Starship's Flight 3, or could involve optimization as Elon's previously stated. Elon Musk mentioned that they are very over-engineered or in some sense, not engineered at all. They know how grid fins work from Falcon 9, so they decided to go with grid fins in order to accelerate development and basically make them large and thick with the option to reduce or replace them later when they gather more data. He mentioned they could probably be made lighter, even staying with the same profile, but most likely they could also be made smaller. You'd only need three, not four, and the third one could be a lot smaller than the other two. This is why the new design of B-11 is truly something to look forward to. How do you think its fins could change? Comment down below so we can all discuss. Another issue we noticed during the booster landing process is the performance of the Raptor engines. It may have landed too late because the booster caught fire just one kilometer above the ground. We see that three engines tried to ignite, but it seems like the booster was plunged too quickly and the engines didn't show any reasonable difference in deceleration, so the process didn't occur. At T plus 652 minutes, pay close attention we can see an object flying up from below and hitting the grid fin, peeling off the paint. That object is a piece of the engine base shielding that was dislodged when the Raptor started malfunctioning, or the engine was damaged due to tremendous force during the return at speeds of over 4,000 kilometers an hour. This led to too little thrust to activate the landing process accurately. Therefore, the Raptor engines are also a challenging issue for SpaceX, forcing them to review their technical methods for installing the 33 engines of the booster. So, how about Starship 29? 
how will its design change to ensure the success of Starship's fourth flight? In reality, SpaceX did not raise many issues with Starship Stage 2 during the launch. But through the observations of the space community, it's clear that Ship 29 needs further reinforcement, particularly in its heat shield. The heat shield serves as a critical component for protecting the spacecraft from the intense heat generated during re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. However, concerns have been raised regarding the retention of heat shield tiles during re-entry, with instances of the tiles falling off observed during previous missions. The core issue here lies in the process of attaching the TPS tiles, evidenced by the premature detachment of these protective components. Discovering relatively intact TPS blocks near the launch site, despite the vibrations and pressures during launch, suggests that their detachment may be due to loosely tightened bolts or damaged clip heads. With 18,000 tiles packed tightly together, it can be challenging to verify the correct installation of every tile. Another remote possibility is that stacking, destacking, tanking, detanking, and thermal expansion are the culprits causing the tiles to start wiggling loose before it launches. With multiple attachment points, all the pins would need to cooperate in this process. If one's stubborn, it causes the tile to fail rather than to simply slip its bonds. Now, we still don't know how the tiles will perform under the pressure of re-entry. However, I believe SpaceX will handle the heat well due to thermal management efforts. However, even the best tiles won't help if they come loose. We need to test to see if they can withstand the stresses of re-entry. If they can, then the issue might be with the fasteners. For now, though, the tiles should work fine for Starship until SpaceX finds better options. Adding to the changes of the Ship 29 is the functionality of the payload bay door. This component seems to have not fulfilled its mission, as SpaceX tweeted. The door still hasn't performed the opening and closing properly, and it even popped open during the spacecraft's flight in space. Yikes. We've analyzed this thoroughly in a previously published video, so if you're interested, click to find this video on our YouTube channel. Finally, the redesigned new Starship is also predicted to incorporate an attitude control system that'll work well to keep the spacecraft stable while gliding with its wings. It's called the Reaction Control System, abbreviated as RCS. This system's already been implemented in the initial phase of Starship, so these control units could actually be unusable right now. It just needs to be completed by adding position control units. As usual, everything takes longer than expected. This also means that currently, only the new booster has the new design. The spacecraft will get refurbished in a subsequent update. As SpaceX continues to analyze and learn from previous flights, addressing these challenges will be crucial to improve and optimize the Starship program. By identifying and rectifying the inherent weaknesses in components and attachment processes, SpaceX aims to enhance the reliability and performance of the spacecraft for future missions. Please look forward to a new shine of Starship on their next flight. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.